Hi, this is Don Goldberg for TechView, and my guest today is Brian Cute from Affilius, and we're here to talk about food safety today. There is a huge technological issue with food safety, and that's how you trace food. And, and uh, you know, thanks for being here, Brian. But here we are, it's the year 2010, and we still don't have a system in place that's out there that everybody uses to be able to trace food from end to end, so that we have a, a recall, an E. coli break, uh, outbreak, or something that we can actually trace where it comes from. Tell us what the state of the art is and why we're so far behind. Well, it's, it's true. There's a problem that we can't see end to end today, Don. Um, the problem is that there are technology and solutions out there, some of them proprietary, some mm -hmm. of them standards-based, but you don't have adoption throughout the supply chain. You have a lot of food producers and processors who have implemented traceability within their four walls, but you don't have a technology that allows you to see end to end that snapshot of visibility in the event of a recall mm -hmm. to see where all the tainted food is, where it's been, and trace back and trace forward. That's important for the USDA, that's important for FDA because they have uh, authority and responsibilities to trace in the event of a recall. But also for the food producers and food processors, they don't have visibility sometimes when there is a recall mm -hmm. about which suppliers upstream provided them tainted product. And sometimes when they've sent product downstream, whose hands it's in? Is it in the next guy down? Is it three steps down? So it's those black holes mm -hmm. of visibility that are creating the problem today. And so what are the types of solutions that the industry is looking at to sort of be able to trace easily where food was, which distributor or which producer? Sure. Well, uh, many of them, again, I said, are, are within the four walls. So mm -hmm. as a, a, a company receives food product and then processes it internally and packages up and sends it down the stream, they're tracing within those four walls. But there are technologies out there that allow the ability to have traceability data in one place, mm -hmm. in electronic form, so that the USDA, the FDA, or the food producer can go into a service and see exactly where all the identified products are right now, where they've been. And this is important because in the event of a recall, A, you want to keep people safe. You don't want people to get sick or die. You want to pull food off the shelves quickly. Mm -hmm. But you want to pull the tainted food. Right. And what we've seen in the past, because of this absence of visibility, is that often the FDA or USDA say, you know what, just pull it all off. Pull off all the meat, pull off all the tomatoes. Mm -hmm. And industries suffer large losses because untainted foods are pulled as a result. And consumers pay higher prices because food's been taken off the market that doesn't need to be. Now, clearly you see, you know, you know there's barcodes on cans of, you know, Campbell's Soup or whatever, and some people use barcodes, some people maybe use some RFID technology, there's probably others. It's probably important to have a system in place that is agnostic to the technology that producers use, right? It is. I mean, first of all, the identifier strategy is important. As you say, uh, industry, uh, industries and, and producers need to adopt a unique identifier, but that could be any standard. It mm -hmm. could be an RFID could be 2D data matrix, could be an IPv6 address. The important thing is to have a unique identifier associated with your product. When that's in place, that product can be traced from beginning to the consumer's table. Um, and then it's important, and I think in the legislation that's pending, you're seeing that Congress recognizes interoperability and standards-based aspects mm -hmm. of some technologies that accommodate whatever identifier a food producer chooses to use is critical. Interoperability and standards-based pulls all the technologies together, pulls the data together in an end-to-end -end visibility snapshot. Well, let's talk about the legislation. Senator Durbin in the Senate mm -hmm. is pushing a bill through, or hopefully it will go through, that would require these types of, of systems to be put in place. Mm -hmm. uh, where does that stand? What are the, what's the, uh, the outlook for it? Well, it looks like um, it should be moving in a few weeks, and mm -hmm. if it's, it's passed and signed into law, you will have the FDA overseeing three pilot programs focused on produce um, in the next, next year or two. And that'll be a nice push for traceability because at that point we can, with the industry hand in hand, begin to implement mm -hmm. some of these end-to-end -end standard, standards-based interoperable solutions and demonstrate the ability to have full vis visibility into the supply chain. There have been two kind of fundamental pushbacks from uh, players in the food supply chain. Understandable too. Mm -hmm. One is cost. Right. And the second is data sharing. Uh, you know, obviously there's going to be a cost associated with this new, this new service. Um, the good news is that the end-to-end -end traceability services that are out there are web-enabled, mm -hmm. very low cost to access, and secure. Mm -hmm. uh, in terms of data sharing, obviously companies, food producers 
don't want to share much of their commercial data with competitors. Right. right. So it's important that there be security built into these solutions that allow them to share the necessary data in limited fashion with the FDA and USDA, and at the same time protect it from other folks who sure. they don't want to share it with. Them. Sure. So. Hopefully, in a few years, this is implemented. What you're going to have is the FDA, USDA producers being able, if there's an if there's an outbreak of something, if someone's sick, or if there's just a bad product somewhere, quickly go into this database, without giving away company secrets to each mm -hmm. other, and being able to quickly trace. Okay, this came from this distributor. Distributor. This came from this particular pallet, and that would speed up recalls and safety. Tremendously, right? Remarkably. Remar I mean, th that's one of, the, one of the benefits here is speed. Mm -hmm. Full visibility to see where the tainted product is. Have confidence that other product is not tainted because you've got it associated with that unique identifier. So you know this lot of tomatoes is fine. That can stay on the shelves. People will be safe in, in buying and eating those tomatoes. But very rapidly finding out where the bad product is, pulling it off the shelves. And frankly, you know, the, the web also enables not just the visibility and traceability, but really rapid communications today, too. I mean, there are other services you can add in, uh, mobile SMS alerts mm -hmm. to food producers mm -hmm. and co-ops. Mm -hmm. You know, today, the, the word sometimes goes out to a co-op in a physical building right. out in the farmland, and some guy has to jump in his truck and drive to the farmer. All of this, these new technologies, web-enabled technologies, will add speed, certainty, and clarity to the process. Well, that's great. Well, listen, Brian, thank you for being here. And once this bill gets enacted, hopefully, let's talk again about the pilot projects and see how they're coming along. Be happy to. Thank you very much. Thank you. I'm Don Goldberg for TechView.